I am moving. I'm moving house, which means I'm going through the process of organizing my collection, making sure cards are where they're supposed to be. Things aren't lost. And it's a real pain. It is actually Pepper Pains. But while I was doing it, I was looking at some of my binders and I was like, you know what? I got some really cool Pokemon cards. These are all Japanese Pokemon cards. In case you don't know, these cards actually are from a Japanese set called Dream League. These are the character rares and the secret rares from it. And I got a few more inside of this binder. And you guys ask all the time, hey, J Love, show us your binder. And I'm always like, yeah, I'll do it. I'm waiting for like the perfect time to make these videos and to make them like really cool. I made a Dream League Master Set video and I had a lot of fun making that, but that was a big effort. But because I'm moving, I'm really busy and I don't have a lot of time and I got to make content. So I was like, you know what? Filler content is definitely going to be showing you guys my Pokemon card binder. So we will start with this one here. This is my SM11 binder. So this has got three different sets in it. By the way, I'm not going to ask you to subscribe because why would you subscribe now? You've been watching the video for a minute. You don't even know who I am. If you're going to like and subscribe, do it at the end of the video. Doing it now is just weird. Now back to this binder. This is SM11 and I'm pretty sure that is Miracle Twins. I'm going to say yes, it definitely is. So this is Miracle Twins, which is the Japanese version of Unified Minds or part of it. Miracle Twins came out in Japan about three months before Unified Minds came out. There's some other cards in Unified Minds from another set. Off the top of my head, I don't remember. But you can see here, I just order things in numbered order and I go through it like that. So you got your grass types here. Sun and Moon sets. So Miracle Twins is a Sun and Moon set. They just have a different vibe. A lot of the illustrations are a little bit more simple. The illustrations from like the Sword and Shield era, so what we're seeing now, are a little bit more full on. You do tend to see a lot more Ken Sugimori illustrations. So that is Shroomish, I'm pretty sure. Among, it's not Among Us, that's Shroomish. Shroomish, you can see that, that's Ken Sugimori artwork. So I guess you got another one here, Kinokoko. Who's that again? Breloom? I can't, no, it evolves into Breloom. Hang on, I got that backwards. That's Shroomish, that's Fungus. Okay, but you can see a lot of the illustrations are a little bit more simple. You do have a nice one here by Shibuzo. That is very clean. And Kagumara Himeno. So a lot of artists that we're seeing these days, they were drawing in the Sun and Moon era. But like I said, I put things in order. Now, Sun and Moon cards, you guys remember these GX Tag Team All-Star cards. These are fantastic. And they're not that rare in the Japanese version. I'm going to take this one out so you guys can see it. But in a Japanese booster box, you'll find like three or four of these. It's been a while since I've opened up Sun and Moon cards. And they just look so clean. These are just... You get at least three or four of these every time you open up a box. Which makes opening up Japanese boxes really fun. These are some of the most fun cards some of the most fun Pokemon cards, period. And the special arts that came from them are even better. Really distinct uh, Wimpod here by Tomokazu Komiya. Fantastic artist that everybody loves. I don't think any Komiya card misses. Shinji Kanda, you guys know Shinji Kanda is a new artist that drew that really cool Giratina Alton art, which we're probably going to see or we will see in Lost Origin. Lost Origin is the English set very soon. Got a very similar style. Yes, here you go. You guys will remember the Mewtwo and Mew GX. Oh, Look at this, we got the Jinx by Soso. -So. This was such a cool set. I really enjoyed Miracle Twins, but part of the reason why people don't look back on these sets super, super fondly is uh, holistically, they do have a lot of just filler art. And there's nothing wrong with Ken Sugimori illustrations. He's one of the GOAT artists. He is one of the, the founding fathers of Pokemon. So there is nothing wrong with the illustrations that he produces. It just sometimes feels a little bit uninspired when they use the stock standard art for the cards there. You can see they're from the Skorupi. It's just, uh, yeah, like it's not as cool as the Jinx. That's basically the story of it. Kurosaki with the Executor, that's really cool. This was a fun set. I wouldn't mind opening this up again, but these boxes, they cost like $200 now, um, which is just, yeah, not really worth it because they're so expensive. Did I put these cards in sleeves? No, I didn't. Oh, wow. I thought I put the commons and uncommons in this binder in sleeves, but I didn't. I must have only done that for the Dream League sets. So this is a no-no. You really shouldn't put your cards. This is bad binder behavior. You shouldn't put your cards just raw like that uh, because what can happen is the back, this like black stuff here, the back, it's got like little dots. It can like imprint the back of the card over time. Now, luckily that hasn't happened to any of these, but you're going to be really careful not to do that. I was wondering why some of them are floating about. The rares and the GXs are the double rares. I've put them in sleeves, so they're fine. Nice Sableye Tyranitar. Let's take that one out. I didn't take the Mewtwo out, but I can do that later. I got a re There's a much cooler Mewtwo, I guess, so I can show you the cooler Mewtwo in a little bit. So these don't have any texturing per se, but they do have that, I guess, that diagonal holographic that you see. Uh, it's kind of similar in the English versions, I'm pretty sure, but... 
Yeah. Also, look how warped they get. They get very, very warped. Japanese cards just warp way faster than English cards. I think it's because they're a little bit thinner. That's probably the main reason. I know they have a different printing style, but they're a little bit thinner. So I think they're just a little bit more prone to bending. It's whatever. Like, I don't think it brings down the value of the card ultimately. If it did, that would be a little bit silly because most Japanese cards, they warp. Very nice card here by Sui Akira Komiyama again. Some really fantastic artists. Oh, look at the Valtel by Sui again. So Sui has a few cards in this set. Uh, Satoshi Nakai, I haven't seen them for a hot minute. I don't know if they're still illustrating cards. A lot of these artists I haven't seen for a while. Yukamori, we've seen plenty from Yukamori with the Coelacanth there. 0313 pops up every now and then, but not that common. Oh, look at how good this Dragonite is. Bang, straight away. Even the Dragonair, even the Dragonair just by Soso. -So. Again, another cool Soso -so card in this set. So clean. Sayo Tsuruta with the Dedene. Very nice. Keichiro Ito drew that really nice Umbreon VMAX. Alison Art that everybody likes. Keichiro Ito, no one really spoke about too much until um until the Umbreon. But damn, look how good this Dragonite is. I forgot how good this was. This is by, sorry, Misa Satsui, if I pronounced that wrong, my bad. Look at that, so dreamy. Oh, I've zoomed in a lot there. Just so dreamy, just absolutely fantastic. You probably get like, how many do you get? Seven rares from a a sun and moon era booster box, Japanese sets. Is this gonna be a really long video? I got the bad feeling that I'm just waffling on at this point. I kind of want to get this within 20 minutes. So I might have to up the pace a little bit. I don't want to drag this one out too. I'm not I'm trying not to drag this one. Naoki Saito with the Rangaroo, that is nice. Oh man, even the slaking, really cool. Um, the slack, slack off, slack off, slack off, slake, slaking. S oh bro. Bro, Slack, what's the, Slaking, Slack, Slaking, Slack Off, Slackosaurus, <laughs> Vigor, Vigoroth, Vigoroth, okay, Vigoroth, and Slack Off, it's, Vigoroth evolves from Slack Off, Slam so calling Slack Off, damn, hey, listen, don't tell me everybody knows all 900 Pokemon, I know people are gonna come in and be like, big fan, I don't care, I really don't care, do it, do it, see what happens, see what happens, this, I had to buy this actually separately, I had to buy that, um, from Card Rush, that is the Sightseer, but just the rare, the special or the full art, sorry, is in GX tag, all stars. Okay, so then we move on to the end of Miracle Twins, which is really cool. These are all the full arts and the special arts. Now, special arts didn't start, in, they didn't start in Sun and Moon sets until after Tag Bolt. SM11 Miracle Twins comes out after, came out after Tag Bolt, and that's basically when Tag Team cards came in. So when Tag Team cards came out, GX tag team cards came out. That's when the special arts started. So you can see, I don't have the full art of the Slowpoke and the Psyduck, but I do have the special art. Nice. I remembered pulling this one, distinctly remember pulling this and it was a fantastic day. This is the rarest card from the set, the Mewtwo and Mew GX. Now it's a promo in English. Uh, in Japanese, no, you had to find it from a box of Miracle Twins and it was tough to find. For a long time, it was pretty cheap though. I guess pretty cheap to find pretty cheap. I'll show you this one up close. I think when I found it, it was probably like a 100 or $150 card. And in the last like month or two, it's gotten really expensive. Now I just keep it in the binder because I don't care. I just like to see it in the set. This is a really cool card. You can see the texture is there. Fantastic. It's got like this speckled dotted texture. Really cool. Look at that. I'm not going to do the big fancy B roll. I probably have done it once before. I might do it again down the line, but I just want to show you guys here in 4k what it looks like. So that is it. Oh, look at that. Very clean. But yes, this is the rarest card from the set. So they're going to get harder to find cards like this. Like I said, it was a promo in English, but just looks way, way better in Japanese because it does have the Japanese style texturing there. Just absolutely incredible. And it is by Sui. Sui had a lot of cards in this set. Next to it, you do have the full art, the hyper rare. I mean, the hyper rare is not the chase from the set. It is probably for the unified minds because there is no special art in Unified Minds. There's a promo. Uh, but in the Japanese set, it is like 9,000 or yeah, 9,000, say about 70, 80 US dollars, whatever that is in Australian. I do have it. I was about to buy it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't really, oh yeah, I pulled this one as well. I forgot about that. I was actually thinking about the set. I was like, I'm gonna have to buy that Hyper Rare before it gets too expensive, but I've got it. Thank goodness. And I'm very glad I didn't double buy it. Other cards from this set that are rare, uh, Sableye and Tyranitar special art. You've got uh, Green's Tactics there and um, Misty's Kindness, Misty's Favor, Misty's Favor, and the, what's that again? The the uh, Channeler, there you go, the Channeler. Precious Ball is a rarish trainer card, I guess, because it's out of rotation, no one really cares about it. 
Um, but there's a few you can see I'm missing here. I'm missing like, I think I'm missing like the giant bomb, uh, the gold energy. There's a couple of hyper rares. I think I'm missing like the rainbow rare, uh, Dragonite, GX, hyper rare, I, whatever. I can get those cards later. I'm not really tripping over myself. The other card that you might not have seen, this was a promo. You got the Dusk Noir promo when you bought a booster box of Miracle Twins. They handed that out for free at Pokemon Centers. Okay. Next set is Remix Bout, easily one of the most underrated Japanese booster boxes of all time. I don't know what it is about Remix Bout, people don't really care about it. This is Remix Bout, so if you've ever seen this box, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of the cards from Cosmic Eclipse uh, came from Remix Bout, and Remix Bout came out in Japan first. It has literally got the three Kanto starters on it. I don't know why people don't, and I'm not trying to pump it. People are gonna be like, you're just trying to pump it. No, I'm not. It just is confusing, considering how much people like Charizard. This has Charizard and Venusaur and Blastoise and Special Arts. It's a relatively small set. I don't know why more people don't go crazy over it. You can see, super small set. I think there's 64 cards in it. There's only like, what, six grass type Pokemon in it? Barely any. Um, but this, like I said, it's got the Venusaur and Schnivy, uh GX. I will show you this. On, can I get to it? Yeah. I'm not too like particular. I get pretty like particular about my cards and making sure I I'm look after them and I don't bend them or anything. I'm not bending any of these, but I don't get too um, finicky about them because I have like a lot because you when you open up like three or four or five of these remix bout boxes You're not getting a stack of these GX cards. They just I can show you the stack I've got here I had it. I had it prepared, right? This is like the stack of I guess I don't need to take the Charizard and the Blastoise out of the binder uh, I'm, I'm, Okay, it's not, not much of, not much of a stack. It's like five cards But I'm pretty sure there's another stack somewhere that I've packed up now um, <laughs> You get a lot of these, okay? You get it, like I said, you open up a box, you get three or four. Charizard here with the, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, what, it's not Brakeson, it's the other one. Is it, no, is it Brakeson? It's Brakeson, isn't it? Brakeson into the cursed Del Fox. Brakeson? It's Brakeson, I'm pretty, Charizard and Brake, Brakeson. Damn, damn, this video gonna get me actually canceled from Pokemon fandom. They're gonna be like, bro, oh, this whole time, you didn't know all 900 Pokemon names? What is this, dude? Uh, then you got Blastoise, and what's this guy's? What's this little fella's name? Ah, uh, it's this. What's this little guy? Um, Penguin Boy, little Peng Pengu, Peng 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 Gundam. I don't know. What's his his little suit penguin? Suit penguin. I know it's Piplup. Shut up. This is a nice one. This one is by Mitsuda Arita, who drew a lot of these GX cards. Actually, I'm pretty sure he drew basically all. Oh yeah, there's like one or two that he didn't draw. No, you know which ones he didn't draw? He didn't draw the ones from Dream League. Those were all by different artists. But apart from that, tag team G tag team GX cards were all illustrated by Mitsuda Arita. That was like a big thing back then. Yeah, there you go. So another banger card. All from this one set, which is just, woo, sheesh, uh, which is just absolutely crazy. The other one that no one cares about is Persian GX, Alolan Persian GX. And that's probably the only dud hit from the set. You will see the full art or the secret rares there that um, feature the, whoa, that feature the, can I get a, uh, that feature the Persian are pretty much the most boring cards from the set. But apart from that, have a look at this. We have some more Shibuzo cards. Uh, Tropius by So So. Absolutely fantastic. Sui. Sui, very, very prominent during this era. Uh, so was Nagamiso. Nagamiso drew a lot of cards. They still draw cards now, but not as much during the Sun and Moon period. They went ham. Psyduck by Sui. Another one there. Golduck. Really nice. And Boar is really cool. And Boar by Kawaiyo. Absolutely cool. Absolutely cool card. Really, really cool card though. No, I really like this a lot. Uh, anytime, I say this all the time, and this is an example of it. Whenever I show like a secret rare or a special art Kawiyo card, I'm always like, Kawiyo cards, they're fantastic. They all look like special art. Look at this and boar. Hang on, I'll just show it up close. Why not? I've got a massive stack of doubles. I don't think I bent that, but I'm not too fussed if it gets a little bit of a warp. Look at that and boar. Absolutely incredible by Kawiyo. Just so much detail in such a small little pace, re uh, little place. Really, really cool. Even the Victini here is nice. Victini here by Sayat Suruta. I'm pretty sure there's a Pokeball there. Let's get a, a nice close look at that. I zoomed out just to zoom back in. Pretty sure we should see a Pokeball at some point. Is that it? Yeah, look. So Sayat Suruta cards always have a Pokeball on them. It's somewhere hidden in the background. Usually it's like a cloud or a bubble. And you can see there, just there where my finger is. That is the hidden Pokeball. Really cool. Such a cool card. Such a cool set. This is why I wanted to make the video because I was like, you know what? I want to be able to like look back on the channel at some point and just see where my sets were at that point in time before I finish them. So this, if anything, this is more like a self-serving video for me. It's just a way for me to sort of bookmark or put this little chapter in my collection, a little journey here 
on YouTube. So this is a this is video is a me video. It's all about me. Akira Egawa, really cool. Fion, I call that Manaphy. There was this one point where I kept saying that was Manaphy, and you guys, people were like, "Come on, bro, it's not Manaphy, it's Fion, F Fioni, F F Fion. How are you supposed to pronounce it? Come on." Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Kawio with the Kyoga, absolutely banger card. Koki Saito actually just revealed. They just got revealed today in Incandescent Arcana. Koki Saito illustrating a new Kyoga card, which is really nice. I love that man. Uh, who else we got here? We got uh, Welma by Tomokazu Komiya. We got Trevenants that I don't really care too much about. I'm not the biggest Trevenant fan. There's a hidden Pikachu here uh, by 0313 in the Mars Shadow. That's pretty cool. Again, you got your Ken Sugimori just filler card. I'm going to call them filler cards. I don't know what happened. It's just like they forgot to commission someone for it. I don't know. Uh, Grudon with the Shin, uh, Shinagasawa rather with the Grudon. Really fun set. Oh, and then it's over. Wow. It's over so quickly. It's literally over before it even starts with the remix bout. One, two, three, four, five. Bang. Five pages, nine, five times nine, whatever that is. You're up to 45 and then you're at the trainers and then you're at the secret rare. So remix bow is a really small set. By the way, this is an ultimate guard zip folio Xeno skin binder nine pocket nine pocket. I think it's like 18 page side loading. I'm not sponsored by ultimate guard. It's just what I use. If you don't like ultimate guard products, I think you can use like palms off grading. They make very similar products, but I just personally like these side loading zip zip folio zip ones. I like that you can zip it up. Look, you can zip it up. You see you zip it. You should hear the zip there, okay? Literally the whole point of these videos was that they were supposed to be just like a quick way to look through the binder with you guys, but I am just, I'm I'm talking my face off right now. This is a nice card by Mahal. We don't see a lot by them anymore, but I like this. I, think, I thought they did a really nice job with the Alola Mark. This was always a really cool card. Every time I'd open up this set, I'd be like, you know what? Very striking. This is an example of a Ken Sugimori card that sort of isn't boring, where it's like, you know, a little bit different. So, I mean, it just depends on the execution of the card. If you're just going to put a picture of the Pokemon just standing there, like they did with the throw, it's like, yeah, it's like, he's just, I don't know. It's like that drip stance. Like, it's just like, you might as well just put a Pokemon doing that drip stance. But when they're doing something a little bit more dynamic, that's my favorite word to describe Pokemon cards, where there's a little bit of movement involved in it. It just looks better. So cards like that feel out of set a little bit more than um cards like the throw there. But this was nice. That's the Persian, uh, Alolan Persian GX that no one cares about. Uh, then you've got trainer cards, which you don't. You just put them in the binder so that it completes the master set and fills it out. Oh, there's a, a rare lady. Oh, yeah, by, by Kurosaki. There's a full art lady, Ojo Summer, in, I think it's Forbidden Light. That's a rare card. Um, but just the normal trainer card is in SM11A. I'm pretty sure there's like another version of lady. There must be um, that came out in Forbidden Light because Forbidden Light is an older set than remix bout uh the dirt bike it's funny that these are rares and the skateboard and the welder there's a few hollow red uh trainer cards in this set but yes here you go you've got the secret rares now and this is why i'm always like what's going on with remix bout like why do people not care about this set it's actually i don't know if you guys just heard those cars driving past man i can't wait to get out of this spot it's so loud uh it's actually ridiculous how beautiful the secret rares and the special arts are from Remix Bout and they're just very, they're very, under, I think they're undervalued, honestly. I didn't want to make this video talking about card values too much because I don't want to just sit here and talk about money all day. But if you wanted to pick up these cards, they're pretty easy to get. I, I'd say they're affordable, especially for old Japanese sets. Uh, the Venusaur and Snivy, I'm going to take this out so I can show you. And I just want to get this out like properly because I like this card a lot. So I don't want to damage it. This is my, my little way of, can you still see it? Yeah, my way of getting these, um, cards out from the side loader. Yeah, that's nice and easy. And I'll zoom in. Hang on. I'll make the, the scene look a little bit better. Quick and easy video, guys. I didn't make it quick and easy at all. You let me know if you like this kind of style of video. I'm going to keep making them either way. I just want to know how you feel about it. But look at that. This is by Yukamori. So this is a handcrafted clay model that Yukamori has created to create this card. And it looks absolutely incredible. It is the special art from the set. There is another Venusaur special art that has Salabi on it. I think that one's in Tag Bolt. But this one here with Snivy, Snivy, however you want to say it, is from Remix Bout. And it's like a $20 or $30 card, which is just insane. $20, $20 or $30 special art. Like when new special arts come out for Sword and Shield sets, which are still getting printed, which you could probably be able to get for the next couple of years um, in some capacity. When those cards are coming out and they're like $300, $400 on day one. Meanwhile, you've got cards like this here for $20 or $30. That is a bit 
That's a little bit bonkers. But anyway, um, what do I know? Charizard and I'm sure it's Braxian. I'm sure it's Braxian. Teruna in Japanese. Again, another underrated card. Maybe because it's a English promo. An English promo, I should say, A-N. Um, because it's an English promo, maybe people don't value it as much in Japanese, but holy moly, look at that. The fire, this card has incredible texture. I really need to take a much closer shot of it um, to show you guys again, because there's like four different styles of texture on it. The fire has its own texture. The background got its own texture. Texture. Uh, Charizard and Bracian have their own texture each. Like there's at least like three or four layers of depth on the card texturing alone in this in this card it's absolutely incredible it is by kagemaru himino who drew some really nice pikachus back in the day but that is absolutely crazy even even like the energy um the energy symbols there for the uh for the attack there just look absolutely incredible what an awesome card so good and it's like i think it's like 90 dollars. i checked it's like 90 Australian dollars if you're going to try and buy it from Japan. I checked before I made the video because I wanted to make that point specifically. Okay, Blastoise and the little penguin suit boy. This is a nice card and also extremely underrated. It's fun because they're like, they're, you're looking at them through a bubble. They're not in a bubble, but you're looking at them like through it. And it's just, look at that. Really fun. What a fun card. Just absolutely awesome. Uh, by Akira Komiyama, who drew a lot of special arts. I think they drew that Zapdos V special art from... Which set is that again? Matchless Fighters. Man, my memory is not the same as it used to be. But look at this. This is so cool. And again, I think it was a promo. It's warped a little bit. This has lived in my binder since day one. So it has warped a little bit, but I don't care. Um, it doesn't damage the card. It doesn't impact the card's existence in any way. I don't know if it Im impacts grading. I feel like it doesn't because most Japanese cards warp. But look at that. Super clean. Oh, you could get all three of these special arts here for like, what's that? Probably like $130, $150. That's crazy. Three special arts of the Kanto starters for $150. Is such a thing even possible? It must be because I know you can go and do it right now. Uh, you got Professor Oak there. There is Professor Oak setting as a full art. I picked up a few of those. I think I got another one here. Yeah. Uh, the roller skater is the waifu from the set. It's by Nagimiso who hasn't drawn full arts for trainers since. I don't think, I think that might be their last one that they've drawn. Um, they're still drawing Pokemon cards, but I don't think they've done full arts since. And then you got the hyper rares, which are whatever, like, you know, uh, look, Sun and Moon hyper rares do look kind of cool. I'll show you the Charizard because that's like the go-to. So we're going to have a look at that one up close and you can see it is pretty clean. Damn, this is going to be a long, this is a longer video than I thought it was going to be. I thought we'd be in and out here in like 20 minutes. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm just going to go and break your immersion right now. Who's even still watching? This is a long video. You must really like looking at Pokemon cards if you're still here. In which case, thank you very much. Anybody who watches my videos, you are the actual real MVP. It is always just so surreal seeing people's comments on this channel uh, and hearing the output, the outpouring of support and how much love you guys have for the content I make here. No, that seriously, I'm being, I'm being genuine here. Um, it's really kind. So thank you as always for your support. But yeah, you can see it does have a cool texture. I guess it's a little bit different to the English version. Um, all the hyper rares look better in Japanese, in my opinion. Um, but you'd always prefer a, a special art over a hyper rare. But it is still cool nonetheless. It is fun, I guess, to have them in the set, especially back around this period where like sets are overall much smaller. And I think that's like a great strength of um, Japanese sun and, or sun and moon sets in general is that they are much smaller, not just like the total cards in the set, but even the secret rares, there's fewer of them. This is complete. So this is a complete Remix Bout Master set. And you can see there's only like, um, eight on this page, and then there is another eight on this page. So 16. There's only 16 secret rares in this set. Whereas now, most Japanese Sword and Shield sets, they have like 23 upwards to 30 secret rares, which is just, it's too many. It, it dilutes your possible secret rare pulls. And it, when there's like, I guess, junk-ish or like boring secret rares, like full arts that, like full arts of Drapion V, like no one really cares. Like it, it brings down the set. Whereas like a set like Remix Bear, you know, I'd say if you got any of the cards on this page, except that one, um, and any of the cards on this page, except that one, and maybe these three, you take out five cards out of the uh, 16 secret rares, and there's 11 secret rares that you'd be happy to find. Three of which are really cool special arts. One is an awesome old school trainer. Uh, you've got hyper rares of the Kanto starters. Like overall, really solid set. Remix Bout is right up there 
with one of the greats. I just don't think people appreciate it enough. Oh my gosh, he's talking. He is talking a lot. Okay, Dream League. I'm, I'm honestly not trying to fluff this out. I just, I'm getting, I'm not even going to edit this. I'm just going to put this up. I might chop a little bit uh, here, or, here or there out. Um, but for the most part, I'm just going to upload <laughs> this video as it is. Okay, so Dream League. Now, I did make a big fun video on Dream League. You can check that out. Uh, there might be a link in the description. There probably will be. But we'll go through it just, you know, a little bit casually here. So Dream League is another really small set. I think it's even smaller than Remix Bear. It is. Look. 49 cards, three grass type, three fire type, nine water type. Like it's super, super small, but it's all killer, no filler. That's what makes Dream League so fantastic. I'd say every card on this page here outside of the Slugma is an absolute banger. And again, it's not a slight on Ken Sugimori. If you're watching Ken, it's just, it's not personal. It's just, why didn't they commission an artist for that card? It would have Holistically, the set would have looked better. Anyway, I'm waffling again. Uh, Kagemaru Himeno. So like I was saying, the Tag Team GX cards, and even though this isn't Tag Team GX, uh, the Tag Team GX cards in this set were illustrated by different artists. And then they all drew the special arts respectively each. But look at that. This is just a double rare. This is, you'll find one of these in a box. Like it's absolutely incredible. This set, Dream League is an absolute banger. Like that's why I made the long video that I did because Dream League was just so fantastic. I'll get my my fat finger out of the way. Sorry about that. You can just see the card in its glory on its own. Look at that. Just so cool. I think these all look better in Japanese. So it might be bias. I got nothing against English collectors. Like you do you. Everyone just collects the way they like. I just, I think they look better in Japanese. And every time I see them, I just, I have to say it and rub it in people's faces. Um, The Odish, look at the Odish. Why did I say Odish? The Odish looks fantastic. The Gloom. Wow, such a cool set. The the Penguin Boy, Roma Uratsuka with the Weave, uh, the Sneasel, sorry. Polyon, who drew the Empoleon? Oh, Fukuda, fantastic. Gold Star Illustrator, Masakazu, uh, Masakazu Fukuda, sorry, with the really cool Empoleon. Komiya with another card here. Shibuzo in the set too. Kawiyo, I loved this card. I always thought that the Wishy Washy in this set was fantastic. Uh, now we have Kimura with the Pikachu. Akira Egawa, everybody loves Akira Egawa, sorry, with that absolute signature cityscape style that is on many Akira Egawa cards. I'll just bring that out so you can see it up close and possible. Up close and possible. That is not, no, up close and per nothing personal, kid. Whoa, zoomed in too hard there. Yeah, really cool. Did I highlight this in the Dream League video? I think I did, I'm pretty sure. But hey, we'll do it again. Anytime I get to speak about Akira Egawa, I will do it gladly. Uh, what else we got in here? Hang on, we gotta zoom out. Oh, whoa, he is, this is, I am talking like, I, I was like, this will be easy content. No way, I am. I am gas. I have been talking for like 30 minutes straight. All right, Magneton. This is really cool. SK Yoshinob, really cool. I like the 3D style cards. You can see that there. This is, this is what I mean. I feel like I should have been... Maybe if you guys want me to zoom in on the, the cards more in the next one I do, if I even do a next one, just let me know. I, I'm not farming comments. I just am looking for feedback on this. Uh, Killia by So So. Uh, Misa Tsutsui again with the Galay. There's a cool Mimikyu by Yorganosuke. Uh, really fantastic. Just overall, this set absolutely slaps. I'll show you the... Actually, you know what? This is what I mean. Like, I opened up a lot of Dream League. Here it is. Yeah, okay. Um, I opened up a lot of Dream League. So I've got a lot of these cards. Like, multiples of them. Look how many... Look how many... Oh, geez. Uh, these are very easy to find, these cards. So uh, if you're trying to, like, get your singles and whatever, like, don't overpay because there's just so many of these cards out there. I don't know how many Dream League boxes I opened. It was probably a lot. Um, but like you can see, I've got at least like five Vile Plume there. The condensation in this house um, has meant that the, the, the sleeves have stuck together, not the cards, the sleeves. So don't stress there, but yeah, cool. Solgaleo and Lanala there. Really cool with Lily on the background. This isn't even a special art. Crazy. Uh, Hideki Ishikawa illustrated that one. Fantastic. Okay, if the cut looks a little bit weird just then, it's because I didn't zoom out and I kept talking about the binder. So I've, I've had to pull it back a little bit. I can't remember what the last thing I said was, but yes, fantastic set. The Steelix here is by Keichiro Ito. So their presence felt well and truly across the sun and moon era of cars. They're just everywhere. Uh, Satoshi Nakai, don't see much of them anymore with the drill bar. Uh, who drew the Onyx? Oh, Onyx is by Otomami. Okay, I don't think we've seen many Otomami cards since. Uh, Naoki Saito with the Reshiram and Zekrom. I'll show you guys that one here. So this is a really cool card. It's hard to say like which is better, the special art or the GX. Like they're both, oh, I should zoom in now. They're both really cool. 
that's the cool thing about Dream League is that even if you don't get the special art, you at least get the, the GX card and that is fantastic on its own. Really clean, absolutely fantastic. Okay, moving on to the next page and hang on, we better zoom out. Okay, I'll zoom out. Okay, so that's what I mean. It's a small set. You get to the Silverly GX and it's kind of over. Uh, that one is by Megumi Mizutani. Got another Fukuda card here, the Stoutland. Keichiro Ito, again, type null. So you can feel Keichiro Ito's presence. Like I was saying, it is well and truly here in the Sun and Moon era. I really like this ends card, um, ends Resolve by Ryuta Fuse. I thought this was a fantastic trainer card. It just looks so clean. I don't know if we can, if you go and look at the Dream League video, I did a really cool close up of that. Okay, then you move on to the character rares. And this is why everyone likes Dream League so much. Who can blame him? I think oh, this video is going into overtime. Yeah, look, logistically, this video is going to be an editing nightmare. I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to go back and clean up like one or two things. Anyway, character rares. So this is why everyone likes Dream League. Now I've got a few of them. I've gone through in depth Dream League in that master set video, please go and watch it. I'm literally begging at this point, but I have well and truly filled out my Dream League binder. It is full. Uh, the Clefairy was a promo. People call this like the Lily promo. Oh, I just had a little bit of gas. It's probably because I'm talking so much. I'm gonna have to edit that out. Um, people call this a Lily promo. It is not a Lily promo. It is a Clefairy promo. Am I gonna take it out? Yeah, I'll take it out. Okay, hang on. Let me take it out. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Sometimes it's all about just getting the right angle on the side loading binder. So this is an XE card. Would you believe that it was free? I think when you bought a booster box of Dream League, you got this card for free and now it's like a hundred, hundred dollars plus. So just fantastic. The character rare cards are flat generally, um, but their background or their hollow just has like a real cool rainbow effect. And they're the same, uh, the trainer gallery cards are the same as them basically, because these are character rares in Japanese, which is what they are in VMAX Climax. And in Trainer Gallery, or the English, sorry, sets, they're called Trainer Gallery. It's the same thing, same, same, but different. But yes, they do look flat with a really cool full card illustration. That is a banger card. If you don't have it in your collection, sooner rather than later, people, I don't know what it is about Lily, um, but collectors go crazy and make all cards that feature her very expensive. I think there is a new um, Pokemon Masters EX playmat coming out that has Lily on it. So expect that to be very hard to find, but yes, the special arts in this set of which there are four, one for each of the GX Pokemon are fantastic. It's difficult to differentiate them from the GX cards or the double rare, sorry, that you are more, that you will find more of in the set because the GX cards or the double rares look so good on their own. The special arts are just like are advanced versions of them. I, 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 the one I'm gonna take out, sorry, is, the um, Reshiram and Zekrom. I will take this one out. And I'm pretty sure uh, the first Dream League booster box I opened, which is on um, the channel, which is a really old video. So if you go back and watch that one and I, I seem a little bit awkward, uh, it's because I am, but hey, nothing's really changed. I've literally spent 15 minutes opening a binder and talking nonstop. So if you look at that video, you'll see this was one of the first special arts from Dream League that I found. And I was like blown away. Really cool, cool. Ooh, look at that. The checkerboard background texture just makes it so cool. This is one of my favorite special arts of all time. Uh, it is by Naoki Saito. Probably because it's got N on it as well. He's one of my favorite characters. It's just a banger card. I bought a few of these. The cool thing about that box, uh, the Dream League booster box that I opened on the channel um, was that it had the Rosa, uh, the Mei, sorry. So Mei here um, in Japanese, Rosa is super expensive. And like I said, I don't want to just sit here and talk about monetary value of these cards, but you can't deny that a lot of the chase cards from Dream League, or I guess the chase card, which is um, Rosa, is like super expensive, and it is. I think it's like $500. Fact check that, I can't remember what's on my head, but I found that in the same booster box opening, which is incredible. So a special art and the rarest trainer full art from the set. Uh, you are very happy with that. Pikachu here by Hitoshi Araga is one of the best character rares from the set. Same with the Mimikyu. I really like the Coughing by Hyogonosuke. You guys have seen that last Mail Day video. I bought a couple more of those. The Magneton is really cool. The Stoutland is even really, just look at that by Mizuwe, fantastic. Fun fact about this Lily card, Lily's best effort. Okay, hang on. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna definitely talk about this. So this is my binder copy. I bought this binder copy on eBay. And the reason why it's my binder copy is because when I bought it and I got it, it was listed as like mint and new. Whoa, and I got it. I was like, oh, okay, hang on. Whoa, we've, we've gone too far, hang on. Maybe it's not even an issue. 
Hang on. Maybe it's not even an issue. Okay, can you see in the corner how there's like a diagonal? See if I hold it like that in this corner, right? There's like a diagonal line. You should be able to see it because we're in 4K. Okay, you see that? Yeah, okay. That looks like a damaged card. When I got it, I was like, oh, it's creased. But if you look at the back, like now you got to look at the top left corner. Like there's no, oh no, it is. Yeah, it is. Fuck it. Okay, so it definitely, oh yeah, yeah it's well and truly bent. Okay, okay. So back to the story. When I bought this card on eBay, it was listed as brand new, mint. And I got it for a bargain. I think I paid like $30. And then when I got it, I saw that I was like, oh great, it's damaged, right? And so I messaged the seller. But when I messaged the seller, I was like, I was polite. I was like, hey man, I think there's like, I was like, did you know there was, no, that's what I said. I was like, did you know there was a bit of damage on the Lily when you sent it? And they wrote back and they were like, no, I didn't know. I didn't notice it at all. Like I never, I never saw it. And then like, that was it. I was like, oh, do I push it? I don't know. But then I looked at who the seller was, like their full name. And it looked really similar to somebody who started watching the streams that I was doing over at Twitch. And I still stream at Twitch, right? But when I put two and two together, I was like, oh my Lord, it is a hundred percent. The guy from chat is who I brought it from. Now I haven't told this story ever. I've told it to one person and I said, don't bring it up ever. But yes, if you are watching this video, dude, and you, you know, you remember that moment, that message on eBay, it was me. And I let it go because you are an absolute homie. And I would never let something like this tear us apart in that way. But Hey dude, you sold me a scuffed card and I, you know what? I kept it because <laughs> I think in the same order, I bought Marnie from Shiny Star V from you. Yeah, that Marnie that's like $300. I think I paid like $160 off you and you sent it in this package. Marnie is mint. But then like two weeks later, Marnie was like $400, $500. And you were messaging me like, bro, I sold the Marnie on eBay. Oh man, I should have waited a little bit longer because like now it's like way more. Oh, and I was like, damn, bro. Oh, that's a shame. Look, you win some, you lose some. All the while I was like, yeah, bro. That that was me. Thanks for the money, bruv. But yes, that is why I never said anything. Bro, you know I love you. I'm not going to dox you, but if you're watching this, you well and truly know who you are. Absolutely got him. Thanks for the money, bro. Okay, uh, you've got the high res of each of those cards. And yes, again, you've got high res for the GX. No, the high are the special arts. No, hang on. Yeah, actually, I never, no I never noticed that. Whoa, hang on. Oh, no, that's the same. No, that is the same. Okay, maybe because there's no, f oh wow, I never noticed that. I only just put two and two together. Normally full arts, um, normally rainbow rares are rainbow versions of the full art. So that's the full art Charizard and Braxium. And then the rainbow version is the same card, but rainbow. I never noticed that. Okay, but then in Dreamly, because there's no full arts, which is based, uh, the rainbow version is just a rainbow version of the special art. I've only literally just put two and two together and realize that is what happened. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, moving on. I've got two of the rods because one of them I bought was damaged. And then I've got my doubles, which I have a lot of for Dream League. So I've got uh, multiple of the Pikachu character rare because that is just, I mean, come on, Pikachu character rare. Come on, people, come on. You want to talk about investing, get the Pikachu. Anyway, I think I've got two. Yeah, I've got two of the special art Reshiram Zekron because I love it. I got another Hyper Rare because why not? I was picking up these Lunala and Sol Galea on the cheap because they got Lily on them. Again, because they got Lily on them and they were like 30 bucks at the time. So that's cool. Uh, I got another Silverly because hey, why not? And then you can see some of my, I think this is actually all of my Dreamly Character Rare doubles. So there's actually not too many doubles of the Character Rares. I would have thought I had more. I, I, I stopped opening Dream League once I hit all the chase cards because then Dream League, the box itself got really expensive and I was like, I've gotten all the chase cards. What's the point of continuing to open it? I'm not like a big stonky person, but it's like, why keep opening a booster box when you've already found all the cards from it? So I just was like, you know what? I'll leave those those boxes sealed. But if I want to do it in the future for Pogger's content, I can, I've got the options there. I don't have to go and spend, you know, if Dream League becomes like a $2,000 box, I don't have to go back and spend two grand to get it in five years. I can just go into my closet, take it out and be like, hey guys, Pogger's box opening the Pokerev of 20... 2032, that's what I'm aiming for here. But yes, SM11 binder, that was a long one. Uh, maybe I'll do the next video, won't be as as many sets. But yeah, I hope you liked that. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. I will put more of these up in the meantime as I slowly start to move. But until next time, take care of yourselves, people. And thank you always so much for watching my videos. You are the real MVPs. See you later.